Now I'd like to talk about fiber optic cable installation. I will point out that while many of you use contractors to install fiber optic cable, there is no reason that uh, you can't install your own fiber optic cable. Uh, it's very possible. And understanding how to install fiber cable uh, will also assist you in directing contractors as they are doing work for you. I've always said that if you can install category six cable and, and put termination ends on it, there's no reason you can't do fiber optic cable. It just needs uh, some specialized training and probably quite a bit of experience. The first piece uh, that's really important to understand as you're installing uh, fiber optic cable is there's a big difference between fiber optic cable that is built by the manufacturer to be run inside of a building and fiber optic cable that's built to be run outside of a building in the outdoors. So uh, if you're running a cable inside of a building, water isn't an issue. You don't have to worry about water intrusion into the cable. You shouldn't have to worry about sun damage of the cable and hopefully uh, the, the rodent uh, issue and rodent damage is not as much of an issue inside of a building as outside. As you look at outdoor cable, virtually all outdoor cable is what's called loose tube cable, which means that there is a buffer tube, a small straw-like tube that uh, the fiber, individual fiber strands are installed into, and in each buffer tube will have typically six or 12 fibers. These loose tube fibers are much smaller, um, and loose tube is typically cheaper than a tight buffer cable. Tight buffer is almost always uh, what is an indoor fiber. Tight buffer is easier to terminate, however, loose tube is cheaper, so kind of a six of one, half a dozen of the other. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is armored cable versus all dielectric cable. Now you can get uh, armored cable for both indoor and outdoors, uh, but the armor protects against rodent damage. It's simply a metallic element that surrounds the fiber and uh, rodents don't tend to like to chew on it as much as they do an indoor fiber. Uh, I would note that now you have a metallic element uh, in your cable and uh, this metallic element requires grounding at each end of the cable so that uh, you don't get stray currents, particularly from lightning. Um, in lightning prone areas, uh, any ungrounded uh, piece of metal that runs between buildings or through a building uh, can certainly carry stray current and damage equipment and uh, hurt people. So here's a few pictures of indoor fiber cable. Unfortunately, the quality of this isn't uh, good enough to really see what uh, this looks like. But if you look on the far left-hand side of this, um, you will note that there are, uh, it's a duplex fiber cable and uh, the plastic coating on the fiber is quite large. The blue fiber cable, kind of uh, second from the right, that is a, a, a loose tube cable and uh, there's multiple fiber strands there and you can see those fiber strands are smaller. So here's an outdoor fiber cable. Uh, you can see it's uh, armored cable. There's a metallic element there and uh, this is indeed a loose tube cable. Again, the quality of the photo is not such that you can really see it, but the fiber strands are much smaller. The previous slide uh, that had the uh, tight buffer on it, the tight buffer is 900 microns. Uh, the um, loose tube cable, the, the plastic coating will be 250 microns. Again, here is an outdoor loose tube. You can kind of see better here uh, the individual optical fibers that are in the flexible buffer tubes that are all color coded. So again, uh, loose tube, 250 microns uh, in a buffer tube, uh, gel filled, it's more compact, it's very water resistant. A tight buffer cable uh, is one fiber in a 900 micron uh, plastic buffer. Uh, there's no gel. It's kind of bigger and sturdier. You can get tight buffer for indoor or outdoor. Mostly people do use the loose tube cable for campus installations where you're going between buildings simply because of the very, uh, the better water resistant uh, characteristics. So let's talk about fiber termination. 
So you can put a connector directly onto the 900 micron tight buffer fiber. This is not necessarily recommended for single mode, but you can probably hand terminate single mode fiber for campus installation. We don't really recommend it. Uh, single mode fiber should be terminated by fusion splicing a factory pre-polished connector onto the individual fiber strands. And this works for both loose tube and tight buffer cable. And the best practices are to place these splices into a splice tray. So uh, this is just a real quick picture of how you fuse and splice fiber. It's really very, very straightforward. Uh, you essentially strip the, the coating, you, whether it's the 250 micron, you're stripping off 125 microns of plastic, or the 900 micron fiber where you're stripping off, you know, what, 750 microns of the plastic to get down to the 125 micron fiber. You simply cleave it so you have a flat ed end of it. Uh, and you place it into a fusion splicer. You see on the right-hand side, uh, there's a 250 micron fiber yet that's yellow coming out of the right-hand side of that right picture, and there's a 900 micron fiber uh, going in on the left-hand side of that rightmost picture. That you just simply press a button. Uh, the uh, fusion splicer aligns the uh, fiber ends together, puts places them together, and melts them together with uh, electric arc. Um, so uh, we talked about uh, fiber optic splice enclosures. Here are some examples, uh, and you know I've labeled these. So there's uh, this wall mount unit on the upper left. There's a fiber optic splice tray where the splices are actually laid into the tray. Uh, there's a fiber optic patch panel just underneath that uh, that's rack mount. Again, there's a splice tray that lays in that. And then an outdoor splice enclosure is on the right-hand side. And this is simply to splice different fiber cables together. Uh, and you can see that this is a, looks like a residential installation. And ultimately, uh, if you're doing fiber to the home, there'll be a what's called a drop cable that comes out of that splice case and goes either aerial or underground to that home. So here are some details of what a splice tray looks like inside. Um, you can see the uh, fibers um, are uh, covered up by, it, it's just a sleeve. Uh, and when you fuse and splice the fiber, it's actually bare glass that's exposed. But you've already put this sleeve uh, on one of the ends of the fiber. You slide it over the bare glass and you put it in a little oven that melts the plastic. It's like shrink tubing that melts the plastic down uh, and protects that bare glass uh, that you've melted together. And let's talk for just a minute about fiber optic testing tools. Everybody, everybody, everybody ought to have a visual fault locator. They're cheap. You can get one for $20 US. Think of it as, you know, you're probably familiar with a tone and trace kit uh, for, for twisted pair cable where you put a tone on one end and you can go at the other end with a little amplifier and find that cable. The visual fault locator simply puts a really, really bright light onto the fiber uh, and you can see it. Anywhere the fiber is bent, you can see that there's light escaping uh, and at the end of the fiber, it'll be a really red bright light. So you must, must have one of those uh, and they again are cheap. Uh, you can buy them at the fs.com place that we had talked about in previous uh, discussions. And uh, it, it's really a must have. You must have one of those. A light source and a power meter aren't required, uh, but they are useful. Um, they're kind of the next level of testing. And basically what you do is uh, the optical light source is a very stabilized uh, light source. So it doesn't vary in optical output. And then you have a power meter uh, that measures uh, the amount of light. So you hook them together with a patch cord. You push the this is zero button. And then uh, you just simply take the, the power meter to the other end of the fiber cable. And you will see that um, you will see what the loss uh, in that cable span is. And then finally, the next picture of a fusion splicer so the, this is, uh, again, used to join the fiber. And this is a simple portable fusion splicer. I found a picture of it on eBay. You can get these for a few thousand dollars. 
certainly something that anyone can learn how to use. Uh, you definitely want to get to some specialized training and get some experience with uh, a qualified installer. And, and again, that is not required unless you're installing your own fiber optic cabling. Finally, uh, optical time domain reflectometer. This is uh, an optical version of a time domain reflectometer. So it basically launches uh, signals of light and then watches the back reflections. Uh, an OTDR, you can see splices, you can see bad splices, you can see bends in the cable that, that where the cable's bent too tightly, uh, and you can see the end of the cable. So this is uh, a more advanced tool. Your contractor must have one of these, and you, they must uh, OTDR every fiber cable that's installed. You don't need one of these unless you're doing your own fiber cable installations. And finally, uh, labeling the fiber cable. Please label each fiber cable, uh, label each end, uh, and label every slack loop and pull point. Uh, you know, you want to know strand count, how many strands, what kind of fiber is it, where is it coming from, where is it going to.